पार्थाय प्रतिबोधितां भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वासंदा भगवदीते भवद्वेषिणी फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी आर टेकिंग ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ द रेलेवेंस ऑफ द भगवदगीता द भगवदगीता इज अ टेक्स्ट दट हैज बीन इन एक्सिस्टेंस फॉर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स about 5000 years ago when there was a great war called the mahabharata war the text was taught by lord arjuna to by lord krishna to arjuna and from then onwards we have seen that great scholars have written commentaries on that many interpretations many explanations translations everything exists for this book it is a short text containing only 700 stanzas of course in the kashmir tradition about a dozen extra shlokas are there according to अभिनव गुप्ता कामेंटरी अवे वर दस्ट दट वॉज फिस्ड बै शंकराचार्य आदिशंकराचार्य इज बी फॉलोड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड एस दि भगवदगीता अमंग ऑल दि कामेंटेटर्स शंकराचार्य इज दि फस्ट दट इज अवेलेबल टू अस but from his own commentary we understand that even before him many people had written commentaries on that and their own interpretations had been given now the earliest commentary is that of shankara and then we have commentaries by ramanacharya madhvacharya madhusudana saraswati so many in sanskrit and the translations in various languages of the world are available everywhere that itself shows the text was relevant is relevant and will be relevant in a different centuries the need for different interpretations was felt by the society and therefore different commentators wrote the commentaries if it were not needed if it were not relevant so many commentaries would not arise at all and therefore in the golden days at the time of adi shankara at the time of madhvacharya at the time of ramanujacharya and many other centuries there was the need for the interpretation of this great text secondly even when we come to the modern times we see that during the freedom struggle of india bala gangadhar tilak used the bhagavad gita as a text to motivate the people to fight against the british he wrote the gita rahasya and we find that even mahatma gandhi was so much impressed by the bhagavad gita he thinks that it serves all the purposes of a new country and then in our own times we find so many great scholars like 
ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯಾನಂದ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಮೆಂಟರೀಸ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ಶೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಡೇ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರೆಲೆವೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ಅಕೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ನೇಚರ್ ರಿಮೇನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಈವನ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ನೀಡೆಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಪರ್ಪಸಸ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯುಟಿಲೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪೆರೆನಿಯಲ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ just a few days ago we heard that rishi sunak the prime minister of england he has said that he uses the bhagavad gita as a guide in his life and therefore the relevance of the bhagavad gita remains all the time then why does this question arise we are people asking is it relevant it is for many reasons first of all the world changes so fast what was new yesterday already becomes obsolete tomorrow any machine any kind of invention it will be new today but after just a few days it has become old and people want to use the new year inventions and therefore everybody asks a text that might have been written about 3000 years ago or even 5000 years ago how can it be relevant today and therefore that is one question that we have that we have to answer the second question of relevance it is because lord krishna taught it to a soldier arjuna as we all know the story arjuna was one of the best archers best soldiers best warriors in the dwapara yuga he was the favorite student of drona and he had known all the secrets of archery when he faced the enemies in a moment there was a change in his mind acharya pitara putra chala sambandhena stata ಏತಾನ್ನ ಹಂತು ಇಚ್ಛಾಮಿ ಘನತೋಪಿ ಮಧುಸೂದನ ಈ ಸೇಸ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೈ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಫಾದರ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಕಸಿನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ ಸೋ ಡಿಯರ್ ಟು ಮೀ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬೀನ್ ನೌ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ to fight them should i do it i think i should not do it guru na hatvahi mahanu bhavan shreyo bhoktum bhikshyam api haloke these are the words that come from the mouth of arjuna instead of killing my gurus even if i have to beg for food on the streets it is still better i should never think that i should have a kingdom rudhira prasigdha that is when that is soaked by blood of my relatives i should not have such a kingdom at all thus he resigned he retired he threw away his favorite bow called gandiva and he stood on the platform of the chariot rathopast upavishat so this was the situation when the bhagavad gita was taught and 
it was necessary for lord krishna to motivate this soldier arjuna to fight with all his might for that purpose krishna had to teach something to this soldier and people ask we are not soldiers we are not retiring from any war how can the bhagavad gita be relevant to us that is their question this is the second question the first question is on account of the lapse of time the second question is because the focus is different we are not in the position of arjuna so how is it relevant to us thirdly today we are living in a scientific world thousands of years ago the philosophy of the world had not developed so much we now have contact with the western philosophy eastern philosophy there are various kinds of people everyone is not the same some people are theists they believe in a personal god there are other people who are atheists nastikas who do not believe in the existence of any god there are also people who call themselves agnostics agnyatavada that is they maintain that there might be a god there might not be a god but it is impossible for the human mind to comprehend it and therefore it is a useless thing to think about it this is something not comprehensible by our mind and so when there are so many different types of people to whom are we saying that the bhagavad gita is relevant are we saying that it is relevant to the theists or are we saying that it is relevant to the atheists or to the agnostics or there are also some people who are called skeptics samshayatma they have doubt in everything was krishna really a god did krishna really teach arjuna these things or is it just an imagination was there a mahabharata war were there some people called pandavas and kauravas or is this all some fiction so that type of doubt is there in the mind of so many people and so to whom are we saying that the bhagavad gita is relevant we say definitely we say that it is relevant to all of them whoever you are the bhagavad gita contains such a truths which are useful which are utilizable by every person whether you believe in the existence of a god or not it doesn't matter the bhagavad gita says atmaiva chatmano bandhu atmaiva ripuratmana bandhuratmatmanastasya yenatmaiva atmanajitah anatmanastu shatrutve varte tatmaiva shatruvat you are the best friend of yourself the bhagavad gita is telling every person man woman child old man everybody we should know that anyone that loves me loves for his or her own sake 
If somebody loves me most, it should be me. If I do not love myself, then how can anybody else love? And therefore, we should know Uddharet Atmanatmana. This is the teaching given by the Bhagavad Gita. Don't wait for somebody else to come and lift you up. Whatever you might be in the, in the society, whatever you might be in the life, it is possible for you to rise higher. For that, you have to depend on yourself. Uddharet Atmana Atmanam Natmana Vavasadayet You should not destroy yourself. Whoever you are, we are not demanding that you should believe in one God. Whatever your goals, whatever your aim, if you have to succeed, then have this self-confidence. Is this not relevant to everyone, whoever one is? And therefore, the Bhagavad Gita is giving to the world many, very useful teachings which are relevant all the time. In the world, there are different types of statements. There are some eternal statements. They cannot be changed at any time. And therefore, the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, when it is telling the Arjuna, do your duty, it is not just one person called Arjuna. Every one of you, every one of us is Arjuna. We are not fighting in a battlefield, that is true. But we are fighting in our life. Who does not face the problems? Is there any person in the world who has no problems? Whether one is an extremely rich man or extremely poor man, just a middle class, everyone has so many problems. And therefore, he is fighting. He has moments of crisis. Tell me one person in the world who says that I have never met any crisis. There is no such person. There are such moments just as Arjuna gave up his hope, became helpless and hopeless and said that he is retiring from his duty. It was necessary for Lord Krishna to lift him up. His mind had to be extricated from that morass. He had to be raised up. And for that purpose, the Bhagavad Gita was taught. We are all Arjunas. We are all in such moments and in such moments, the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita are necessary. And therefore, the Bhagavad Gita is relevant for everybody, whether one is living in India or America or Israel or Thailand or China. Maybe they say, we do not want it. But when they face such moments, when they read a few lines from the Bhagavad Gita, they again get that courage to face those problems. And therefore, the Bhagavad Gita becomes relevant. Science might have changed the world, but the world remains the same. How dangerous it was at the time of the Ramayana when there were so many demons attacking 
and therefore what types of difficulties rama lakshmana sita they all faced in the forest today the same things are happening in the cities every day what are we reading in the newspapers there is such a great fall of morality morally man has been falling and therefore if the bhagavad gita was needed at any time it is needed now even more we have to understand that the bhagavad gita has answers for all these things we have to find them we have to see we have to read between the lines of the bhagavad gita what great teachings are being given today we see that the students are coming from different corners of the world just 3 days ago i met four students in my home they had come there i am asking them where they came from one girl is from mexico one is from venezuela and so on and so on where have they come such a great distance crossing the oceans they have come to mysore they have come to different parts of india seeking the solutions for their problems in yoga bhagavad gita is yoga shastra please understand this many people might think that this is mere vedanta but no it is not limited to vedanta it is the yoga shastra in the bhagavad gita itself lord krishna is called yogeshwara yatra yogeshwara krishna yatra partho dhanurdhara so krishna is called yogeshwara ishwara is the master he is the master of yoga we say that sage patanjali gave us the yoga shastra it is true the yoga sutras were given to the world by patanjali but even before that in the earlier incarnation lord krishna had taught the yoga in the fourth chapter we are reading imam vivasvate yogam proktavanaham vyayam vivasvan manave praha madurikshaka vibravi evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo vidu sakale neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa sayevayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratana it was i that taught the yoga for the first time very very long ago proktavanaham i told this and that vivaswan again told to manu manu to ikshvaku and thus in the line of kings this raja vidya raja yoga it is existent in this world there were dark times when the yoga had disappeared but now i am teaching the same to you arjuna sayevayam maya tedya yoga prokta puratanah the old yoga so the bhagavad gita is a text that is mainly taught to tell the secrets of the yoga to the world 
That is why every chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is called a yoga. Sankhya yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, jnana yoga, sannyasa yoga, etc. etc. So this is a science that has been developed in the Bhagavad Gita. And the Lord is looking at the whole humanity. For everyone, this has to be taught. There are different types of people. Everyone is not already qualified to enter into the Bhagavad Gita, to enter into the Yoga. And therefore, as a preparation, he is giving the Karma Yoga. That is the secret we have to learn. Every one of us is doing karma. Every one is doing some work or the other. Nahi kaschit kshanam api jatu tishthatya karma krut. No one can stay even for a moment without doing any work. At least mentally he is working. So, everyone is doing karma. But karma yogis are very few. Karma is being done. How can you convert that karma into yoga? That is the secret that you have to learn from the Bhagavad Gita. Become a karma yogi. Don't become a karmi. As long as you are doing karma, loko yam karma bandhana. This world is a binding. It binds you. But when you convert, when you change your karma into karma yoga, it is no longer binding. That is all the difference. Everyone has to learn this. By reading the Bhagavad Gita, what we should learn is our ability we should acquire to convert this karma into karma yoga. How do we do it? Yoga karma su kaushalam how nicely the Lord has put it. Yoga means your cleverness in doing the karma. Yoga, karma su kaushalam. What is the cleverness that is required? We should do the karma, but we should take care that it does not bind us. Padma patram evam bhasa. Just like the lotus leaf on that water falls, but the water does not stick to it. It just flows away. You should take care that the karmans you do do not stick to you. Your Atman should be free like the Padma Patra. How to do it? When you are doing your duty, when you are doing your work as a service to that great power called God. If you do not believe in God, it doesn't matter. If you are doing it as a service to humanity, then the karma does not bind you. It becomes karma yoga. Phala bhi sandhi rahita karma. Yogina karma kurvanti sangam tyaktva atma shuddhaye kaye na manasavacha kevalai rindriyairati The yogins are also doing the work. 
ordinary man is also doing it. When with an ordinary mind we are doing the karmas, we are binding ourselves with ropes. And then we say, oh, we cannot escape, we cannot escape. Let me tell you a story of a monkey. In some house, some eatables. In Kannada, we call it Pulanga Yunde. Those balls were made, very sweet ones. They were kept in a vessel which had a narrow neck. Some monkeys raided the house. A young monkey has put its hand into that vessel and trying to take away two or three of those parts. And therefore, it cannot lift its hand out of the vessel. The mother monkey says, the owners are coming. They will beat you to pieces. Immediately come out. The young monkey says, How can I come? This vessel is holding me. It is not allowing me to free myself. The mother monkey says, You fool! The vessel is not catching you. It is not holding you. You are trying to catch so many of those balls and therefore you cannot take away your hand. Leave them, automatically your hand comes out and you will be free. We are all in that same situation. We have stretched our hands into so many things. I cannot give up this beautiful house I cannot forget my bank account. I cannot give up my interest in this stock. On account of that, we have bound ourselves while doing our duty. If we have the mind that this is after all the service I can render to the great master Krishna, then automatically every one of us can become karma yogins. And therefore, there will be no binding of that karma. It is so easy, but it cannot do because we have that desire to hold all those things in the narrow, naked pleasant. Please understand this. And therefore, the Karma Yoga that has been taught by Lord Krishna, Karmanye Vadhikaraste, Ma Paleshu Kadachana, Ma Karma Palahe Tuttu, Ma Te Sangustu Akarmani. So, in this situation, Everyone should understand Ma Karma Phala Heturpu. I am not the cause of these karmas. If I have grown a plant, if the plant is producing a flower, if the plant is producing a fruit, it is not on account of me that Ahankara should be given up. Please keep this in your mind. For that flower to bloom, for that fruit to ripe, how many different causes are there? It is on account of the sunlight that the plant is able to grow and collect food. The plants can produce food only on account of photosynthesis. We are not giving the sunlight. 
we have pour some water true but did we produce the water it is produced by nature there were so many intellects that were exchanging the pollen pollination was taking place on account of those many insects the honey bees etc it was not on account of me and therefore the lord is telling ma karma phala hetu tu never imagine that you are the cause of producing all these things you are just a very unimportant small cause that's all you are not the only cause just because of that don't sit idle mate sangostu akarmani if this one shloka is followed honestly by all the people the world will be a different place this has to be understood this has to be told to the people to whichever religion they may belong the bhagavad gita is not only for the hindus it is for all the human beings whoever it is has to learn this when this is understood the people will become gods that has to be understood that is the difference in the gnana yoga buddhi yoga he says how much wisdom has been given by lord krishna lord krishna tells us dure nahya varam karma buddhi yoga dhananjaya बुद्धौ शरणमीच्छ कृपण फल हेतव एवरे वर्ड इज वर्थ इट्स गोल्ड वर्थ इट्स वेट इन गोल्ड सच वर्ड्स हैव बीन गिवन इन द भगवद गीता वाई इट इज रिलेवेंट ऑल द टाइम बिकॉज दे कैरी सो मच ऑफ विस्डम दूरे नश्यवर कर्म बुद्धि योगा if you are doing mechanical work as a doctor as a soldier as a teacher whoever you are if you are doing it just mechanically it is very inferior dure nahi avaram karma avaram is inferior buddhi yoga only when you are using your buddhi yoga with that then it becomes superior work take an example how many people might be driving cars at this moment in the world please think how many million people are driving the cars but they are driving it mechanically and therefore the cars do not improve even if 10 million people are driving the cars like that for 10 years there will be one person who has the buddhi yoga how can i make this car more efficient with 1 liter of petrol it is running 10 kilometers is it not possible to make it 15 kilometers some person will be thinking that is buddhi yoga it is not mechanical work on account of that person there is improvement in the engine such a person is one in a million one in a billion that buddhi yoga is necessary for your karma yoga without the buddhi yoga just karma is mechanical work it does not improve the world 
ದೂರೇಣ ಶವರಂ ಕರ್ಮ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯೋಗಾದ್ ಧನಂಜಯ ಬುದ್ಧೌ ಶರಣಮನ್ವಿಚ್ಛ ನೇಚರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಯು ದ ಬ್ರೈನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸರ್ಟನ್ಲಿ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಕರ್ಮ ಯೋಗ should be connected to the buddhi yoga that is what is called a jnana yoga udara sarva emaite janitu atmaiva me matam asthitas sahi uttatma vindate anuttamam gatim there are so many people that approach me ಚತುರ್ವಿಧ ಭಜಂತೆ ಮಾಂ ಜನಾಸು ಕೃತಿ ನೋ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಆರ್ಥೋ ಜಿಜ್ಞಾಸು ರಥಾರ್ಥಿ ಜ್ಞಾನೀ ಚ ಭರತ ಶವ ಆರ್ ವಿ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಗೋ ಬಟ್ ಈವನ್ ಟುಡೆ ಯು ಗೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಎ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ತಹ ದೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರೆಸ್ I have such financial problems. God save me. My child is suffering from fever. Oh God, save my child. When this artata comes, naturally many people go. Otherwise, they do, do, do not remember. Uh, in Kannada we say, Sankata Bandhaga Venkata Ramana, as you all know. So, that is Artha. And then, there are Jignasus. They are always curious. Is the God really present there? Why should you go to the temple? Is, is, you yourself say that the God is everywhere. Then what is the need of going to a temple? Why should I worship the Bhagavad Gita? Everywhere, everywhere the God is there. Such people are jignasus. They are curious about everything. But only idle curiosity. That desire is not to find the truth. It is only just asking a question. For that purpose, jignasus are there. Artharthi. Those that are always merchants. whenever they spend 1 rupee they expect a profit of 10 rupees even when they go to the temple in front of the god what they say is i will arrange your procession at a cost of 10000 rupees if god you very kindly make me get a profit profit of 1 million rupees that is their merchandise artharthi finally jnani cha bharata rishabha a person who knows is true form swarupa a person who knows what krishna is on account of bhakti that jnana converting into bhakti he is going so chaturvidha bhajante ma janasukati jnani tu atmaiva me matam the lord is saying that jnani who is aware of his true form and the form of the lord how they are related such a person is considered as god himself jnani tu atma eva me matam asthita sahi yuktatma indate anuttama indate therefore whether it is karma yoga or jnana yoga or bhakti yoga that has been taught in the bhagavad gita it is relevant all the time to everyone 
it is not limited to any country region or religion none of that counts what is needed is a desire to know if that is available we can make everyone understand it and understand its value thus the relevance of the bhagavad gita is for all the times many people ask we do not know about future what is going to happen in this world no one knows the world may change like that yes the world will change new inventions are coming in this world we do not use bows and arrows as arjuna did now it is sputniks it is missiles that that the people are using that is true so the intention is all the all the same there, there is no doubt about it and therefore what we all have to change is the minds of the people every person has to be touched by the truths said by lord krishna if the correct message of the bhagavad gita is given in the right way every man can change it is possible therefore we are saying that the bhagavad gita is relevant all the time don't think that this is just a conventional text that has remained the same it is a revolutionary text it has challenged the beliefs of so many people at that time itself ಯಾಮಿಮಾಂಪುಷ್ಪಿತಾಂವಾಚಂಪ್ರದಂತ್ಯವಿಪಶ್ಚಿತ ಭೋಗೈಶ್ವರ್ಯಪ್ರಸಕ್ತ after all the aim of a person is only to have swarga if i enter into the world of indra i will be privileged to see the dance of urvashi rambha tilottama what can be more than that kamatmana swarga para but the defect is ಜನ್ಮ ಕರ್ಮ ಫಲ ಪ್ರದ ಆಲ್ ದೋಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಅಗೈನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಗೈನ್ ಪುನರಪಿ ಜನನ ಪುನರಪಿ ಮರಣಂ ಪುನರಪಿ ಜನನಿ ಜಠರೇ ಶಯನ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವೇದ ವಾದ ರಥ ಪಾರ್ಥ ನಾಣ್ಯದ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ವಾದಿನ ದೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವೇದಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅವಿಪಶ್ಚಿತ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅವಿವೇಕಿನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ವೈಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೈಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಚಾಲೆಂಜ್ ಸಿ ಫೈವ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಎಗೋ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸ್ವಾಪರ ಯುಗ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ the bhagavad gita was standing up saying that this ritualism is not what is required 
even if you gain that kind of swarga you will have to be born again te tam bhuktva swarga lokam vishalam kshine punye martya lokam vishanti you might have performed that many many ashwamedha das you might get a chance to live in the swarga but it is like spending some time in a five star hotel you are treated like a prince you are treated like a king but as soon as the money you have deposited is gone they ask for more money but there is no money then unceremoniously you are kicked out the same thing happens even in swarga and therefore krishna is saying it is not what is required if one is really intelligent really wise then he should choose for something that is permanent and therefore the bhagavad gita came into being please understand that if the intention of krishna were only to motivate arjuna to fight then the first 20 shlokas in the second chapter itself would be enough he could go to the war at the time itself there was no need of telling about the raja yoga about the abhyasa yoga about the jnana yoga all these things what was the need for arjuna at that time it is to teach us that the bhagavad gita has come into existence therefore the bhagavad gita's teachings are relevant all the time not only in the past not only in the present in the future also forever and ever as long as human beings are there the bhagavad gita will be a guide for life so my time is over therefore i am stopping now because the subject is over there is so much to be said about the bhagavad gita we can go on and on talking about this subject but on account of the time limit set i am stopping here